It can be challenging if somebody hands you a chart sometimes. You're looking at it, there's a bunch of figures on there and you have to figure out what to play. Sometimes there's a little bit of a rhythm that's written above the staff and you're like, okay, what does that mean? I don't know where I'm supposed to play. Bass drum, snare drum, I'm not sure what that means. Other times there's a bunch of rhythms written in the staff and sometimes it's a clear rhythm that's written there and other times there's things tied to the bass drum and the cymbal and all the stuff and stuff and they wrote in a fill like, play awesome fill and then they have all the stuff in there and you're like, what does that even mean? Well, let me tell you something. I don't even know what that means most of the time. If they just write a simple rhythm, they're actually doing you a favor. My name is Josh Quirk, and in this video, I want to decode some of the stuff so it begins to make sense. We're going to talk about just single accents that occur within a bar. And in doing that, it's going to give you a way to begin to interpret rhythms and understand how these things are built so that when we add more notes or more rhythms or a two bar phrase or a four bar phrase and with all these figures, you're going to know whether you're supposed to play a fill, not to play a fill, what kind of fill to play, or whether you're going to play the bass drum or the snare drum. All right, let's decode some of the stuff. One beat accents, let's get into it. Before we get into the actual decoding of the notes, we need to know what it is that we are decoding. Now, if a rhythm is written above the staff, generally that's thought of as a section figure. And a section figure just means that you are going to accent with one of the other sections that is supporting a melody line that's playing. So if the saxophones are going va va do vi va va da va do va and the trumpets come in bop 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 behind that, you're accenting with the trumpet section and playing that section figure. An ensemble figure is usually written in the staff, and that means that more than one section is going to be playing it in general, the entire ensemble. Now, sometimes that's written as ensemble, sometimes they write that as orchestra, sometimes they write that as 2D, but no matter what happens, if it's in the staff, you're going to be playing an entire ensemble figure, and you're going to make a bigger deal out of that. So now that we have a general idea of what those two things are, we're going to go through these single note accents and we're going to play them both as a section figure and as an ensemble figure. So let's take a look at our first accent. It's a section figure because it's written above the line and it's a single hit on B2. Now section figures are generally a lighter thing and you know you're accenting with one of the sections so you're not going to come smashing out of the gate on it. They're generally played within your jazz time and you can either play them just solely by hitting that or adding a note or two in front of it to sort of set that up. But lightly, you're not going to make a big deal out of it. Here's what it sounds like if we just play it within jazz time. I'm going to play a bar of jazz time and then play the figure. Always good to do these in two or four bar cycles. This will be a two bar cycle playing the section figure lightly on beat two. That's it. Nothing to it. Now, a couple other things about playing figures in general with jazz band. It's okay to not play ding, ding, da, ding all the time when you're playing these. You want to keep as much of this going as possible, but if you've never played jazz time before and playing jazz time and hitting the snare drum at the same time is like a lot of stuff, it's okay to play quarter notes. The other reason why it's okay to play quarter notes is because sometimes that just sounds better for the band. Jazz is based on quarter notes. The subdivision is in triplets. So if you're just playing quarter notes and there's a lot of figures going on, sometimes switching to quarter notes sounds better for the entire band anyway. And the last reason why you might do that is because something is going really fast and you're going back and forth between playing jazz time and quarter notes on the ride, one, to give yourself a break, and two, to make sure that you're not trying to turn it into a giant, crazy, fast technical exercise when you're trying to play the figures cleanly for the entire band. So here's that same thing, but I'm going to switch to quarter notes. Now you can do those quarter notes a measure ahead of time to set yourself up for when the figure comes in on beat two. So I'm just going to play quarter notes for this whole exercise. One, two, three, four. Now, as a general rule, when we're playing these things, I like to keep this idea of playing bass, snare, bass, snare, back and forth like this. Now, I would never play that in a big band situation unless there's a series of figures that would do that. But when I keep that in mind, it lets me know where I'm supposed to play the accents. You know, we're usually like rock drummers, one, two, three, four. Bass drum, snare drum, bass drum, snare drum, one, two, three, four. In this case, we hit the snare on beat two. 
Now, you can play the bass drum on B2 as well, but as a starting point, especially as a section figure, I would just play that on the snare drum. Let's do a little setup for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to play the bass drum on one and the snare drum on two. Now I was feathering the bass drum, so now I'm just not going to feather the bass drum. I'm going to play the bass drum on beat one to set up the figure on beat two. So in that case, we've just got the bass drum playing a light hit on one to align the band to set everybody up to play on beat two. Now I can play that beat two on the bass drum as well, and that would sound like this. That B2 that's happening on the bass drum might occur if maybe the trombones were playing the background figure as opposed to the trumpets. Sometimes you're matching timbre, snare drum higher, trumpets, bass drum lower, trombones. If I want to set up that bass drum on B2, I can play the snare drum on B1. So whatever instrument the bass drum, or if the bass drum is going to play the figure, I'm going to set it up with the snare drum. If the snare drum's playing the figure, I'm going to set it up with the bass drum. So snare drum one, bass drum two. Now just playing that, if you're not used to it, can be weird because playing jazz time and hitting the snare drum on one can be weird. So again, we could do the same thing with the setup, but we're going to play quarter notes. And that could be because technically that's the best way, but it also could be because those quarter notes make the band swing. You want to be able to do both. You got to work out the technical stuff, but sometimes quarter notes is best, even if technically playing jazz time, ding, 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 all that stuff is more complicated and seems hipper. The better way might just be quarter notes. Here's quarter notes, snare drum one, bass drum two. One, two, three. Here's the cool part. If you know how to do that on beat two, beat four is going to be exactly the same thing. Beats two and four in jazz time are the same. They align the same with the hi-hat and they align the same with the ride cymbal pattern just like beats one and three do that as well. So if you know how to play on two, you know how to play on four. So now we're gonna do this hit, as you can see, section figure on beat four. We're gonna play it on the bass drum using the snare drum to set that up. Here we go. The one thing you do have to make sure you're doing whenever you're playing any kind of big band figure so that you don't get confused is count. Because two is not the same as four in terms of where you are in the measure, but the technical facility it takes to play that is going to be exactly the same. So don't trick yourself. Know where you are. Count. If that B2 is written in the staff, that means it's an ensemble figure and you're going to need to make a bigger deal out of it. Now you can still do a single hit splashing the ride cymbal or crashing if you want. I would generally at least have a single note set up for that. So let's begin with that. We're gonna play a little bit more volume. We're gonna do a single note setup. We're gonna play the snare drum on two for the accent. We're gonna set it up on the bass drum with beat one and I'm gonna shoulder shank that cymbal to give that thing a little bit of a splash. Here we go, ensemble figure on beat two. I might need to do what's known as a setup, and that is a simple fill that lands on the note before where the accent is actually going to be. So if I want to accent on beat two with the snare drum as a crash, I want to finish on beat one with my bass drum and crash on beat two. And a simple fill to use is something like one, two, three. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. If I want to play that accent on the bass drum, I finish the fill on the snare drum. One, two, three.
Very simple, and the same thing would apply to beat four as well. You're just gonna set up to beat three, crash on beat four. Let's play some accents on one and three. We'll start with a section figure, and we're gonna accent it on the snare drum on beat one within our jazz time. Not a big a deal, it's a section figure. We're just gonna play it within time. Here we go. A little setup for that would be playing the bass drum on beat four, playing the snare drum on one as the section accent. Coming into beat one with the snare drum from jazz time. One, two, three, four, oh, one. Can be kind of weird sometimes, and depending on the tempo you're at, could also be kind of weird. So again, you could play these with just quarter note on the ride cymbal, and sometimes that's the best move anyway. Here it is with quarter notes on the ride. Now something to keep in mind is that you have to move back and forth between playing jazz time and quarter notes. You don't just play quarter notes for the whole chart. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that as you go into playing some of those figures, you can switch to a quarter note feel. I have another video called Big Band Warm Ups where it talks about how to get in and out of all these things. We don't have time for all that now, but you can get into playing quarter notes and after the figure is done, you just simply return to jazz time. There's no specific way, just kind of get back to it. Now if the twos and fours are gonna be the same, so are the ones and threes. So let's play an ensemble accent on beat three. And this time we're gonna play that accent on the bass drum. And as you can clearly hear, I set it up with beat two, we played the accent on beat three. That also is falling into our boom, crack, boom, crack concept, which you'll notice more of when we add more notes to these figures. But for right now, you know, playing it either on the bass drum or the snare drum, you wanna be able to do either one. So practice doing both. Let's move to some of the and of the beats, specifically right now, the and of one. And this is really where sometimes that quarter note thing is gonna come into play to make your life a little bit easier technically, for the band or also at tempo if you're doing these things a little bit faster. So we're gonna play this first as a section figure lightly within jazz time and a one. It's written above the staff, we're gonna play it as a section figure. Here we go. I can set that up lightly by playing the bass drum on one to set up the accent on the and of one. Boo bop, here we go. One. We're used to that bass drum on one, so it's not super weird for us to play it that way. Let's play the same figure as an ensemble figure, but we're gonna play the accent on the and of one with the bass drum, and we're gonna set it up with the snare drum. So first we're just gonna play a single hit on the snare drum, and we're gonna crash on the bass drum with the and of one. Here we go. That's a little bit weird of a technical thing to handle. You'll also notice that I'm not playing the hi-hat on beat two right at that point. I could be, but in that case, I wasn't, and I just noticed it, so I thought I'd mention it. And then I just return to time the best that I can. With ensemble accents, you're often getting away from time and dealing with stuff, especially if you're getting into ands like that or longer figures. Now, you can play those things within time, but a lot of times it doesn't matter as much, but you really have to be grounded with your time and know sort of what's going on. Let's play that same ensemble figure again, but this time I'm going to play a bigger fill to set up the downbeat of one on the snare to play the accent on the and of one with the bass drum. I use that same fill, ba da ba da ba, ba da ba da ba. Let's play that same ensemble figure, but on the snare drum. Again, I'm continuing to use that same basic fill, and I'm finishing the fill on the bass drum, and then accenting 
the snare drum on the and of one by splashing the ride cymbal at the same time. Now we have to remember that the and of one and the and of three technically are the same. They're not in the same place in the measure, but what we have to do to achieve that are going to basically be the same. So if we know how to play something on the and of one, we know how to play it on the and of three. Let's look at some and of two and and of four in section and ensemble figures. First, let's check it out as a section figure. I'm just going to play the and of two within my ride time. Now, if catching one, two, and is kind of weird, just play quarter notes. Check it out. Same thing. I could even play a bar of regular jazz ride and then switch to quarter notes for when I'm going to play that figure. It's whatever works best for you. If technically you can kind of play it and it makes sense, do it. If it's a little bit much, don't worry about it. Play the quarters, catch the accent. Worst case scenario, none of this is working. Just play good time. That's always the best answer. Just play good time. But we're trying to get some stuff going, so these are some methods to help you do that. Let's play that and of two with a little bit of a setup. So we're going to play the bass drum on B2 and play the snare drum on the and of two, still as a section figure. Not a big deal, still trying to keep it light. Let's take a look at the same thing if we were to play as an ensemble figure, crashing on the ride cymbal on the and of two. So we're going to play this figure on the bass drum on the and of two, set up with a little bit of a fill. So there we are, a very simple fill. Right, right, left, crash. I'll bring that right here, and then I bring the right back to the snare drum to play that and of one and two and. It sets up and two and. The fill is this. Please just learn that fill exactly like that, because you will use it for many, many figures a million times. It's going to be the same thing if we move it to the end of four. We're just going to start the fill on beat three. Boop a da ba, three and four and. Same thing, two bar phrase, accenting the and of four in the second bar with our fill that we just learned that we're going to use a bajillion times for the rest of our lives. Don't forget to catch that bass drum on beat three. So again, that bass drum's playing on three, where we'd like it to be. Three, four, and. It's okay to be a little conservative and play things that you know are going to work because 18 other people are counting on us. So there you are, some single note accents on down beats and on the ends of the beat. If you understand these basics, when you connect these to longer figures or even longer measures of figures, you're really going to be in really great shape. Play the figure on the snare drum, play it on the bass drum, do a light setup and a larger setup. Practice some super basic fills with these things. Use the ones you already know. Play clean, play clear, practice these things. I know you can do it. I'll see you next time.